Uh, we'll see if we got it. Okay. Now it looks like we're going here. Uh, the agenda. First, we'll cover some club agenda. Our next meeting is going to be March 15th, and that'll be on password management by Jim Holman. And he'll explain why you need a password manager, some of the advantages and vulnerabilities of password management, and uh, do an overview of some of the available software there. Uh, we do have a MaxSig that meets monthly. Their next meeting is on Friday, February 24th. And uh, everyone's welcome to attend that. So if you do have a phone or, uh, or an iPad or anything, certainly it's worthwhile to, uh, to attend those. Uh, we will be having or are looking to have a presentation at our April 19th meeting on the Amazon Dot uh, or Echo or Google Home. And Mike Griffin from the club is willing to present, but he's looking for somebody else to help him there. And so if you've got uh, one of these devices and would be willing to work with Mike uh, to create a presentation, uh, and it's pretty easy to do presentations with the Internet and uh, just doing a few searches, you can uh, get a bunch of information there. So if you're interested in helping Mike out and, and presenting at the April 19th meeting, uh, contact myself or contact Mike, and uh, uh, it's, it's really not that hard to present there. Our officers, uh, Jim Holman uh, in the middle there, is our president. Uh, Linda Brown is our vice president. Paul Ebert, I don't see him. He's our secretary. Uh, Mike Griffin, uh, who will be giving that presentation, is our treasurer and our Max Sig. Stan Miller is our secretary. Andrew Petrucci is our communications coordinator. And my name is Tom Kreitzer. I'm a director at large. Uh, members old and new, you can pay your dues to Paul, and since Paul isn't here, uh, you can drop him off with me. Uh, I've already got one up here, uh, so if you do uh, or do want to pay, you can uh, drop him with me. Uh, also, a reminder, if you're changing your email, uh, make sure and notify us so that we update our membership uh, list, because uh, that's the way that we keep in touch and send out the notices for these meetings. <laughs> Suggestions for topics, you can email uh, any ideas uh, or talk to any of the board members. And we're always looking for volunteers to present on hardware and software that you use. And uh, if you don't want to present, uh, we do have a monthly e-bike newsletter. You can write a short, meaning, you know, a couple of sentences to uh, multiple pages uh, article on uh, something that you may be doing at home or work. Our website uh, is listed on the handout, on the back of the handout. It has past meetings and slides, uh, and when we record it, uh, like I'm doing today, uh, we uh, post the recording out there also. We have a deal section. We have our monthly uh, newsletter is also out there, uh, and this is the URL, but it's also listed on the handout and in the emails that we send out. Uh, we just completed the club survey uh, that ended the end of December there, and I accumulated all the results and published the survey. So the survey is out on the PC Club website. Uh, we had 66 members uh, who took the survey uh, out of our 135 uh, members that we currently have in the club, and I want to thank those that uh, did respond there. This is the 15th year that we've done it, and uh, what, I'll, what I do in the summary is I compare trends and talk about things. So it's quite interesting to see how the club has evolved and uh, power of the computers and the different interests that we have. So uh, it's got a lot of information, and it is out on the website. Uh, if you go to the past meeting area, you'll see uh, the file out there. Any club questions before we get to the main topic? Okay. We've got a small group, so we can really make this informal. If you do have any questions, uh, speak up there. Uh, tax preparation. Uh, 
You no longer have to be filling out the forms uh, and sending them in and waiting weeks for a refund. Uh, that's changed. Uh, also, if you're uh, using a professional or paying a professional, you can save yourself a lot of money uh, by doing it yourself, and any of the packages that we talk about will more than do the job there. Uh, all these packages are not just uh, duplications of the forms that you see in the tax in the tax forms there. Uh, what they've done is these packages have uh, taken these forms and turned them into interview sessions and questions and answers. So you're stating what your current situation is and what you have and based on that it uh, steps you through and asks you for uh, certain figures and certain uh, uh, deductions and things like that so they're very very easy to use there. You provide the responses and in the background they're filling out all these forms and uh, they're dropping them into the correct spot and uh, totaling up numbers and moving them between it. So you don't have to worry about any of the calculations and making sure that you didn't miss anything. Uh, before we get started, uh, let's just do a quick survey. How many people are currently doing it themselves using the paper tax forms? So you're not using any tax package. Anybody? Okay, well that's good there. Uh, how many pay a professional to do it today? Okay, a few there. And hopefully this will give you kind of the confidence that you can kind of try it yourself and save yourself some money there. Uh, how many use an online tax website? So they don't download the program and, and use it on the PC, they use an online site. How many do the online? I'm the only one. Well, that's my recommendation. So. Uh, desktop software. How many people use desktop software? Okay, so we've got quite a few that are using the desktop software there. Uh, the last one here is local volunteer services. So there are uh, places out there to help uh, senior citizens and low income to do things. And I think we're of that and I don't think any of us is a fugitive from the IRS so you're not uh, uh, you're filing your taxes you're you're not uh, avoiding the government you wouldn't be here I don't think although I did have a, a family that I knew from I grew up in Canby Minnesota and there was a family out there whose uh, uh, son joined Posse Comastatus uh, where they don't pay taxes and he was put in jail for, I think, 12 years or something like that. So uh, it's a good idea to pay your taxes. That You may get away with it for years and years or the government kind of loses track of you. But when they figure out and then you owe this huge chunk of back taxes, uh, never a good, good thing to get the IRS mad at you. Uh, I mentioned uh, for those that are having their taxes done, uh, these are some figures from 2014. Uh, the average uh, 1040 with a state return with no itemized deduction is uh, costs $159 to do uh, for a tax to pay a tax professional. Uh, Schedule A with deductions 273, and if you have a small business or rental, $447. All of these packages, like I mentioned, with their interviews and things like that, make it easy to use and you can save yourself a lot of money there. Next, we'll talk about some of the uh, questions that uh, you, can, uh, you have to ask because not everybody's tax situation is, is the same or how you're going to... Yes? Do you see where a professional tax preparer would no, uh, and 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 you'll and you'll see you'll you'll see you'll see because the top two, two of the top three, we're mainly going to be talking about three uh, three packages. Uh, TurboTax. While you're doing your TurboTax, if you do have a question or anything like that, you can do an online video chat with a tax professional. Now, the other one is H&R Block, used to be tax cut. That you can walk into any of their offices and talk to a tax professional. So 
you know, if you do have some questions and you do uh, want uh, want to make sure on, on some things that you're a little gray on or things like that, both those options let you access a tax professional for the cost of the software. So, you know, you're, you're saving money, plus you're getting access to these resources and stuff like that. This year, H&R Block's got lots of too, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know how good Watson is. <laughs> I, I'd hate to see Watson kind of going through your return, kind of going, oh, we've got this. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the packages themselves, is, as you'll see when we talk about them, uh, you know, have evolved over the years with their interviews and the ease of use and asking you all these questions and things like that, that uh, they, are, they are very, very easy to use. It isn't, like I said, just throwing up a form and then you have to put the right number in the right box and, and things like that. And then do I carry it over to another form or do I do that? You don't have to worry about any of that. So you know, Tom, what Bill Murray says, if you want to teach kids about taxes, keep 30% of the rice cream. Yes, yes, I, I saw that on the internet there. I, I got a kick out of that because, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's usually a shock to uh, people after they graduate or, or you know, their first job when they start seeing how much money is being taken out and, and things like that. But uh, we won't go into the uh, whether it's fair or what should be out there. We're kind of stuck with what it is today and, uh, and dealing with it. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so these are these are some questions that I put together, and what they're meant to do is they're meant to uh, 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 for you to answer, and then that's going to kind of determine because you'll you'll see that these tax packages have multiple different versions, uh, online versions, desktop versions, and then basic, free, uh, deluxe, premium, all these different versions. And then there's uh, potentially extra costs associated with filing. Uh, you can usually print them out and send them in, but if you want to e-file, that's going to cost you money. And if you have multiple states, that's going to cost you money and things like that. Uh, so figuring out which one uh, gives you what you need, uh, answering some of these questions is going to help. So the first question is, do you plan to file a state also? So some people will just file their federal income tax. And the state, uh, like the Minnesota state, usually is just the one form or one form and maybe one other if you're getting a, a, a rebate or that. So usually the state isn't that, uh, that long or that hard to do. So some people will do that uh, on paper and do their federal using the package. But... Uh, if you want to do state, be aware of which what the costs are and uh, what you get with some of these different versions. As I mentioned, uh, do you plan to e-file or are you going to print it out and send it in to the IRS? Wait in line uh, April 15th uh, at the post office to, to get it in just before midnight there. Uh, another question is, how many returns do you file? So if you're going to be doing returns for a spouse, uh, so you're not going to file joint, you're going to file uh, separate, uh, you've also got some kids who had some, uh, some jobs and have a little income, so you want to file that, or maybe you're doing it for your parents or, or friends and neighbors, uh, how many returns you may be doing also uh, influence uh, the version and the price that you might pay. Do you itemize on your return uh, or do you end up filing a 1040 EZ or A, the simpler, the simpler basic uh, one page uh, type of uh, tax forms there? Do you have gains uh, from investments like dividends, interest, stock sales, stock options? Well, those get a little more complicated, more forms to fill out and uh, so uh, uh, that, that requires a different version there usually. <coughs> Do you own a home? And that gets back to the itemized and some other things, but uh, uh, that can be. Do you have rental property? 
Do you own a business, a small business? Uh, do you want the software on your PC or do you uh, want to use it on the website? And uh, we'll talk more about that uh, uh, in a little bit here. Do you uh, want to import last year's information? So uh, uh, it's kind of nice to have that automatically uh, imported for you and ready to go. But if you keep switching versions or changing vendors or things like that, that can make it more difficult to do. And do you want to import data like your W-2s, your 1099s, your interest, the 1099Bs? Uh, it's possible to, from your brokerage or from your bank or things like that to automatically import this stuff and then it'll automatically put the numbers in the right boxes and, and stuff like that. And uh, no, this last one, do you like tips? Uh, and that gets back to the help. How much help are you going to need? Uh, that can influence what version or, or that might be right for you. Uh, also, some of them come with planning tools. So they'll make suggestions uh, either at the end of the return uh, as, as it's checking for the audit. It'll uh, go through and suggest things for next year or deductions that you may consider making next year or changing the way things are done there. So uh, uh, not only will they help you fill out uh, this year's return, but they can help you uh, plan for the future there. All of the packages that we talk about uh, have a choice of the direct entry or the guided interview. And we talked a little bit about the interview and, and uh, going through there. Uh, also, they'll usually let you, if you know that you want to change a number that's on the uh, 1099 dividend uh, form, you can go right to the dividend form and change the number or see it right there. Um, but most people certainly initially putting in the numbers and doing stuff prefer the interview and uh, uh filling out the questions that way. All of them have tons of help and guidance along the way. So if you don't understand something, there's usually a link that you can click. And then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, some of them you can do a video chat or you can go into the H&R Block Office and actually talk to somebody. So there's options for getting uh, lots of help there. Uh, all of them will do a final uh, review of your return. And uh, usually what that is, is it looks at the entire return, making sure that you answered all the questions. And, and uh, if you did your tax form with the same company last year, it's going to compare. Uh, did you fill in most of the stuff that you filled in last year? If you left, left a section out or forgot interest or a dividend or a sale or something like that, it'll remind you. And then also it'll go through and uh, tell you the likelihood that, you, that your uh, tax form might get uh, selected for an audit. So uh, if, you're, if your deductions, let's say, are very, very high, it'll explain to you that these deductions are out of the norm uh, and be prepared. You may be audited uh, and have to prove that. But at least it's going to give you kind of a, a warning there. And then they all give you the option to print it uh, where you can mail it in uh, or you can e-file, which is, you know, sending it over the Internet. And that's going to be the quickest, uh, fastest. If you are getting a return uh, money back, uh, uh, that'll be the fastest. But it also saves you having to uh, uh, potentially, uh, you know, print it out, fold it up, uh, put it in the envelope and send it on. I mentioned that it's very confusing with all the different versions and options and prices that are out there, uh, and it's kind of like taxes in general. Uh, it isn't like there's one price for TurboTax and that's what everybody's paying. You have all these different versions and all these different options, and uh, it can be confusing, and that's why those questions that we went over earlier hopefully will help you figure out what version and what you should use there. And when ultimately what you want to do is you want to find out what you need to match your requirements to the best vendor and the best version for you. So 
it isn't like uh, one uh, one package or one version is the best for everybody. No, uh, based on what you need, uh, these other packages do get market share, are used by hundreds of thousands of people, and uh, so they are valid there. There are hundreds of packages and sites out there for doing taxes, but really the top three uh, that control the market are TurboTax, Tax Act, and H&R Block, which used to be, uh, they acquired the package tax cut. Uh, so these are the top three. Uh, they control, I don't know, I, I was trying to find a figure, and you really can't find a figure, but my estimate would be like 80 to 90 percent of the market is, is done by these three packages there. Um, and that's a combination of online and download packages. Each company offers multiple versions, uh, and those questions that we talked about earlier <clears throat> are going to help dictate which version is uh, going to fit your needs the best. All of them will let you start filing for free, uh, so if you just want to try it out and see, uh, you can try out any of these packages and uh, see how well they work and that because uh, uh, basically you only pay when you file. So if you enter in all the numbers, it's not going to let you print out uh, the forms or e-file until you pay the fee for the package. Uh, and, and that the only thing that you're out trying some of these packages is your time. Uh, and some of them actually even do have mobile apps. So if you have a very simple re return where you're just putting in uh, some numbers from your W-2, uh, like uh, TurboTax, uh, I can take a W-2, I can take my camera on my smartphone, I can take a picture of it, it'll, it'll uh, do optical character recognition, get the numbers off of there, put them in the tax form, and if I don't have anything else that I need to put on there, I can file my return in, in a matter of minutes there. So uh, there are uh, mobile apps for some of this also. I mentioned here the prices listed here are from their websites as of February 9th. Uh, the prices do vary. Sometimes you'll see them go up and they'll go down. And, and uh, there's always discounts like... 3M Club has discounts. Uh, click on this to uh, to get a discount for TurboTax or that. Uh, you'll also see discounts in stores. Uh, this is the Best Buy, uh, the last one. Uh, tax software, H&R Block, save up to $15. TurboTax, save $10. So there's discounts and, and uh, different prices all over, uh, and I mentioned in here, you, you kind of have to shop around for the best price to see what's out there. For myself, for the last seven years, I, I've used TurboTax and I get it for free from Fidelity. Uh, so if you have a Fidelity account, certainly check that out. Uh, the Fidelity uh, discount varies from free to $20 depending on the total value in your Fidelity account. So the total number of dollars that you have in your Fidelity account. Fidelity has different levels, uh, uh, private client group, uh, and there's, uh, if you have 250000 I forgot what that's called, uh, this is a, a million dollar group if you, and above, you're going to get it for free and then these others you're going to pay uh, a little bit less there. But certainly if you go out to the Fidelity website, you'll see in the, in the middle of the screen out there, there's links there that you can use to, uh, to uh, uh, start using, in this case, TurboTax and see how much it's going to cost. Uh, but uh, this, like I mentioned, uh, it's the premium version, uh, and and it's for free there. Uh, when I had sent this out, uh, somebody else responded to me that uh, they were not aware, and neither was I, that uh, I use the online version, but he found that you could actually download uh, the version to your PC also using the links from Fidelity. 
So uh, it is possible to, but you to get some of these discounts and stuff like that, you have to first start out on that website going to TurboTax, and that sets up the discount. Then you have the ability to download and to uh, uh, fill out fill out the forms or do whatever there. So, so does Fidelity drive the system, or does TurboTax go back and get the ten ninety nine? Which which way is that going? Uh, the the if you're if you're going to download uh, the information from your brokerage and that everything is done through the through the tax website. So in this case, TurboTax. If if you're using TurboTax. You're using the forms and you're doing stuff at the TurboTax location. Or if you're doing it on your PC, you've downloaded it to your PC. Uh, once you're on your PC or, or online, uh, it's going to go through that interview process and it's going to say, uh, did you have any stock sales? Did you have any dividends? And if you respond yes, it'll say from where? And you type in Fidelity and it'll say, Oh, I can connect to Fidelity if you'll give me the account number and your password. It'll go out, grab the information, and automatically put it into the package, whether it's online or or on the PC. How safe is that? I'll mention here in, in just a second. I mean, it's very very safe because. Yeah. What's that? Nobody's drained your account yet. Nobody's drained the account, uh, and your your vulnerability to somebody stealing that information is the same whether you use the tax package or don't use the tax package. Your accounts, your passwords, uh, somebody hacking in can happen from a number of different spots, uh, from retailers that you deal with, from banks that you deal with. So. You know, it's it's a case of uh, I think Jim will cover a little bit of that next month with the password managers. You want a good password manager. You want different account names. You want different passwords on all these different sites, uh, just so that if if a site does get hacked or somebody gets information, it's limited to that site and not not everything. The breaches, like like you've heard. You know, lately or in the last few months with Yahoo, have to do more with uh, okay, somebody broke into Yahoo. Well, who cares if uh, if somebody can get into a Yahoo email account? That's really not the issue. The issue is most people use that same account number and password to their bank, to their brokerage, and that's the mistake that people make. Is you can't be using the same thing there. You want strong passwords, you want strong accounts, uh, you want all this stuff. Uh, uh, and if you're going to have all these different accounts and passwords, that's where you're going to need a password manager because nobody's going to remember 10, 20, 50, 100. I think I'm up to maybe 150 or more. And, and uh, you know, you shouldn't be keeping them the same. Now, it's okay to have one account and one password that is kind of the, I don't care if it gets hacked password or anyone knows it, but basically all of your bank and uh, emails and things like that, you do you do want to have separate passwords and accounts. Tom, are you going to go into uh, doing it online I'll just be talking about it. Uh, I, I do everything online now. When, when it first started out, there obviously was a big difference between on your desktop, it was more user friendly, uh, it was more responsive. Uh, the online was pretty poor interface, user interface for clicking and, and navigating and everything like that. Well, over the years, that's completely changed. Uh, the majority of people now do it online. They don't do it on a desktop there. Uh, so it is just like everything else. It's moving more and more to online there. Okay. I mentioned a new one this year, Credit Karma. How many people have heard of Credit Karma attack? 
Credit Karma is a, is a company that does free credit reports, uh, so you can get your credit score for free. Just sign up out at their site. Well, this year they added tax, and uh, their site is brand new this year. Uh, they don't have a downloadable version, uh, so they don't offer any of that, and they don't offer multiple versions. So there's only one version they have, and it's entirely free. All you have to do is sign up out there. And uh, it lets you e-file federal, and it lets you e-file state, and uh, everything is, is good there. Uh, the pros, uh, it is free federal and state creation, printing, and e-filing of complex returns. So if you have dividends, if you have stock sales, if you have uh, private business, you can do. Uh, there is only one version, and that's free. The cons or, or that is it is only online, so those that like to have a package locally, uh, this won't work for you. It lacks the features uh, and help to compete with the big three. So it doesn't have, since it's a, essentially a version one of a package, it doesn't have the help, it doesn't have the ability to video chat with a tax professional or walk into H&R Block. Uh, but uh, it, it works to file and it works to uh, capture your numbers. It'll, it'll step you through uh, putting your numbers in and, and printing it out. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how it evolves if they do offer it next year. And, and each year that they do it, if they continue to do it, I would imagine they'll uh, add more and more features that they'll be catching up. But right now it... Uh, it uh, does have some limitations there. Uh, but for simple returns, and, and if you don't need help, this is obviously, you can't beat free. Is there a lot of pop-up ads, or is there a lot of, does that information go out? Do they send their information, your information? No, they, they do claim uh, to be secure, because obviously if you filed, uh, if you wanted your credit before, they, they know your social security number, they know, you know, so so they do have uh, that, and it's, it's not like this is a, a hacking site just looking to gather all your information there, and, and it doesn't let you import data from your broker, so this, this site does not let you import, let's say, from Fidelity. You can type in the numbers once you have them, and your W-2, you can type in your W-2, but you can't import. And you couldn't import a previous year's version either to start filling it out and, and do things. You're essentially starting from scratch there. So how does Karma make their money? Karma makes their money by uh, the same way as if you were at, like, the Mint, uh, when we talked about money management, uh, uh, Quicken and, and things like that, they make their money by doing suggestions. So if they see that you have CDs, they'll suggest where you might invest your CDs, the ads, ads and referrals. So that's where they make their money is through ads and referrals. Uh, their credit side of it makes it through uh, recommending uh, credit advisors or plan, sign up with this company for a plan, a repayment plan, that kind of thing. So uh, they make it, they make their money and they make a lot of money by these other referrals and that. And you're saying it's new this year, so there's no real experience. There's no track record uh, for it. This is just, and I haven't used it, uh, this is just uh, in the reviews what it said and stuff like that. But again, if it's simple type returns and you're looking for the lowest cost, you know, this is going to be the simplest, lowest cost, or maybe not the simplest, but certainly the lowest cost there. You know, if it's on the IRS, don't know if they publish a list of certified software. Yeah, you, you have to be certified in order to submit uh, submit to the IRS, and so they are certified there. And But there's hundreds of companies that e-file that, that uh, uh, send it in. So I, I, I would say that doesn't necessarily say anything, uh, but uh, uh, it, to me it's more a case of this being a version one of a package. It, again, if you had a very simple return, 
uh, and knew these are the numbers that I want to get, I can get them in in this package and I can file and it's going to be free. Now, if you want a little more help and you want a little more planning and, and things like that, then these other packages, a TurboTax or an H&R Block or, or that are going to be a better package there. But realize, again, the difference in cost and, and you'll see these differences when we get to them. Okay. Uh, we mentioned the online uh, aspect uh, versus having it on your desktop. I, I recommend using the online version to create and file your taxes instead of the desktop versions. Uh, the online contain all the same tools, functions as the desktop versions and are just as easy to use. So that user interface. Uh, uh, and the experts will come out in terms of security, uh, reassuring customers that online tax services are perfectly secure, just like your bank or broker or any credit card uh, stuff. They, they are very, very secure there. Uh, like the desktop software, uh, when you start a return, you can start and pause at any time. Your information is saved. It's saved out in the cloud which has its advantages uh, because, again, I can log on from any PC, add stuff to it, get at it. I don't have to worry about backing it up. I don't have to worry about some of these other things. That's already done for me. And uh, I use TurboTax. I can go back as many years as I've ever filed with TurboTax and get back my return and, and see what's out there. The, uh, I would imagine that if you have a file with a return, Yes, the online services uh, will let you file amended returns. Those are considered a brand new return. And so that information is kept separate from the original return and stuff like that. Be aware, amended returns do carry their own, the costs associated with it. So uh, there are costs associated with e-filing, with uh, filing an amended return there. Uh, yes. So if you use the PC version, you know, this year, do the online versions allow you to import the PC version? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, some of the packages do let you import previous versions or previous vendors uh, into uh, to start your next year there. Uh, you have to kind of check with the package to see whether it does allow importing or not. Uh, certainly, if you were using TurboTax desktop and then go to the online, yes, it does let you. Because uh, one of the options uh, in the desktop version is to switch to the online version. Uh, the difference in price, the online is always cheaper than the desktop uh, for comparable models and stuff like that. Uh, the other thing, uh, uh, frequently uh, these desktop versions are having to be updated because there was either changes in the tax code or bugs or things like that that uh, may have occurred. So uh, the desktop versions, you're, uh, almost every time you start it up and do stuff, you'll see it's downloading a new version because it's, it's doing that. You don't have to worry about that on the online version insofar as the minute you go online, you're using the most current version that is available there. So that, that's a little bit of an advantage there uh, that you're always getting the most current and never having to wait for a download and an install before you can start using it, that kind of thing. Yes? Maybe we'll address this too. Um, you know, if any of them allow you to import from a different venue, like if you go to TurboTax this year, can you import a tax act? That I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't checked on all of them, uh, so I don't know there. Uh, the other thing that you have is you have uh, uh, if you're if you're importing your bank statements and W-2s and things like that, you're also getting the ability to fill in some of that information. The only thing that you lack by not having last year's is 
the packages, if you're familiar with the desktop versions or the online version from the same vendor, will compare your last year to this year and say, oh, this went up or you didn't put in a number here. Is this still valid? That kind of thing. And that's kind of nice because otherwise you kind of have to or probably are doing that yourself, putting, you know, putting the two forms and just making sure that things look okay there. That you didn't miss anything. Yes, Jim. Well, the other thing that might come through is if you have anything that's a carryover. So, yeah, if there's any if there's any values to carry over. So let's say you had the alternative minimum tax. Uh, the alternative minimum tax. You're going to have to take those numbers from last year and put them into this year. Uh, and if you don't bring that in during the interview process, it's going to ask you in. 2015, did you pay alternative minimum tax? If you say yes, it's going to want those numbers entered in. So you're going to have to look on that sheet. So it's not like it disregards it. It's just you're going to have to put in numbers because it doesn't have that data and it needs that data to fill out this, this year's return. So yeah, that's a good point there. There's There can be stuff in addition to names and things like that. Uh, uh, there ends up being uh, numbers and, and things like that to pass along. And if you had a refund uh, last year from the state and you itemized uh, your federal last year, then that has to be added back in to the state. Uh, and so there's, you know, there's, <laughs> there's all those things that the packages will take care of. And if it doesn't have the numbers, it'll prompt you for the numbers to, to put it in. Okay. Uh, I mentioned here, you know, for those that are worried about suddenly the internet going away, I always do print a PDF of my return and save it on my local hard drive. So I always do physically have a copy there, but the main version that I have is uh, out on, the, in my case, the TurboTax cloud there. Okay, uh, typical versions, uh, I mentioned there's multiple versions. You usually, most of the vendors have a free version. That's for basic tax needs. It'll let you do federal and state filing is usually free. Uh, it's usually limited to the 1040EZ or A and for incomes less than $100,000. Then the next level up is uh, basic, simple tax needs, uh, includes basic deduction identification, limited forms, and, and some help there. So you don't get the help, the H&R block uh, representative help, until you buy into a certain level, and that's true of TurboTax also there. Uh, and so you start moving up, Deluxe and Plus, you, that's good for homeowners and investors, offers uh, more to identify your deductions, uh, tools for life events, donations, and audit risk, it does more. And a premium, uh, that's uh, for if you do have a, uh, uh, your own business or rental properties, uh, you have more forms and advanced calculations, uh, that's usually where the premiums come in. So this is TurboTax, uh, and at the top I show the online version, uh, the free version is free. Uh, then you start moving up to the deluxe, uh, thirty-four ninety-nine, and then if you're going to e-file, it's going to cost you thirty-six dollars uh, for each state e-file there. Extra. Extra. Yes. And again, depending on some of these, some of these packages, when you buy stuff, you'll get so many free and so, you know, and stuff like that. So you look at the premium online here. Okay, this is what it costs online. Well, if you bought the uh, the download package and loaded it on your PC, okay, it's $89.99. And then for state e-file, you could do three of them for $25, $24.99. So all those questions that uh, we talked about at the beginning, how many state are you going to do? Are you filing multiple? That lets you determine what version might you might need and then for you to figure out what the cost is going to be. So as you can see, the cost, the cost for the premium uh, uh, or, or the 
PC versions are more than what you see for the online versions, and uh, but you really have to add in all the costs of does each state cost me money, does it e-filing cost me money, that kind of thing. Let's see where the online is cheaper. And and again, it depends on where you buy. Uh, this is strictly if you just went out to the vendor's website and purchased it from there. When you use when you buy stuff, so you can buy the online version at Sam's. You can buy it from a link. Uh, uh, the Fidelity, like I mentioned, I, I click on the Fidelity. I pay nothing. That's where it's free. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the free version, and it's the premium version, and, and that. So, uh, again, how much you pay depends on where you came in from and what offer you use. So, look around there. Uh, buyer beware. Yeah, some people will print the state and save the $36, because, again, it's not... That won't do the e-filing because it'll let you do the state free of charge. It's yeah. just that e-filing yeah. where they. I have, I have done. That. Yeah. The state. I do the money. But my question: Most things have changed. Your next bottom line or state software that has been only for the first phase. Right, and and I mentioned each year. So if you let's say uh, you and your wife, uh, you lived in Wisconsin, and she had some in Wisconsin, and you had yours in uh, Minnesota, so you maybe have to do two state filings there, and so that's that's where uh, you know it it can it can add up there. Even the software, even if you don't e-file, that's the way it was with TurboTax. The first state was free, and then there was some charge. Just for the software. Right. Yeah. I don't have the group. Okay. Uh, the pros of TurboTax, it still stands as the most streamlined, intuitive way to file your taxes. Uh, the other two uh, the, uh, have come close to it, but it's still the best package out there. Uh, Top of the line threat detection and lots of tax planning. Users can, and this is where I mentioned, users can share their screen and receive extra expert help from a CPA agent via one-way video. So you can talk if you have questions. If you uh, want to get uh, more detail there, you can get that. Uh, I haven't used it, so I can't speak to it. Uh, I, I've just seen it in the reviews where they've talked about it. One kind of mentioned that you had to schedule a time or that. I'm Again, I'm not sure if it's immediate or if you schedule a time, but you do have access to, to a professional there. Yes? One comment back before talking about uh, sitting down with a CPA or something. Uh, I don't, I've never tried this service, but uh, um, my wife has a business and we had to file Schedule C for 30 years. Uh, and two times during that period when we've had changes in our situation, I have sat down with the CPA, I've taken my prepared tax return to the federal and state, and just had him review it. And it has been worthwhile because he points out sensitive areas and potential triggers for audits. And, and and that's a that's a good point there the audit and the, and the review there and all of the packages after you fill out your information will go through where they call it an audit review and that's exactly what it does so it's it is a similar type of thing there that it's doing where it'll point out did you forget this uh, this is zero or this is too high or this is you know things like that now, I gotta tell you, my first and only experience with HR Block was um, they, they really lowered my taxes by taking my income and putting it on my wife's. She didn't have my joint income. And so I, that put me in a different tax bracket. And boy, did we ever have um, a low tax that year. The only trouble is, we got audited. <laughs> and it was illegal to do that. 
I can't give my income. And, and, and I mean, that's a good point. Just because just you use a tax professional doesn't doesn't mean that you're getting the best advice either. So it, you do have to be a little bit. We've got a few minutes here. Uh, the cons of TurboTax, it is the most expensive of the three. So it, you are going to be paying more for it than these others. I was, I was thinking, uh, yep. I was cold um, doesn't it integrate with Fidelity for doing a lot better? Where the other ones, you can, you can still import stuff, but you have to like download it in this CSV format and then import it. So, I mean, where, where TurboTax is a direct integration. TurboTax is, is probably the oldest of the three, and because TurboTax is owned by Intuit, uh, it has financial relationships with. Uh, I think when we were talking about Quicken and Mint, uh, 17,000 institutions, uh, brokerage houses, banks, things like that. So it has that connection there. Uh, so some of these others have a limited number of connections that, that they'll support, in which case if, if there isn't an automatic, then you have to manually enter the stuff off of your dividend form or, or whatever. Does the now work with the both of them work. Download or online. Work with Fidelity. I use it. Well, any of the versions will let you download. The free one. The free one doesn't cover. Credit Karma. Credit Karma does not let you download anything, or you know, go out to any site. Uh, Tax Act. Uh, Tax Act used to be the cheap leader. Uh, last year, Tax Act was fourteen ninety nine. They've kind of wised up and figured out that they were so cheap that they just about doubled their prices across the board. Uh, state filing was used to be fourteen ninety nine also. Uh, so they they bumped their prices up, but it uh, it's it's. it's Right. It's the most affordable of the top three, although the price, like I mentioned, is almost doubled from $14.99 to $27. It is perfectly built, though, uh, for a standard W-2 work, worker with less than confusing tax returns. Doesn't have that access to a CPA or access to H&R Block, but if you know what you're doing, you can use it. Doesn't offer the robust help or online face-to-face -face support that the other two have. This year, it's just about as expensive as its two top competitors. So the prices are getting close. Yes. Yeah, it's a little cheaper. But yeah, and and so if you had to do it, I'd go with Credit Karma, which is totally free. You know, if you have a simple return, I'd use that over Tax Act. Oh, right. I think, I mean, from a marketing viewpoint, they're overpricing it relative to Yeah. And H&R Block, uh, this similar type of deal, uh, it's it's closer to uh, to a TurboTax in terms of price. TurboTax, uh, only, uh, only their premium version went up this year, and that went up uh, $10 from $79 to $89, whereas all these other companies, uh, their prices have gone up. But H&R Block, uh, if you do want to sit down with somebody in an H&R office and ask them questions or, or review your return, <coughs> this uh, you can buy the package, you can sit down with them and go over your return and, and make changes there. So it, it does have its advantages there. Uh, and as I mentioned, if you're making the transition away from your accountant, or just want that face-to-face -face interaction, H&R Block is a top choice for that, just because it's included with the price there. And it does let you import your return from TurboTax or Tax Act. So there's the question I think Joe had, could I, reach, could I bring in last year's, even though I used another package there? I thought TurboTax imported from Tax Act, but Tax Act. Tax Act doesn't. This is H&R Block tax cut. 
Yeah. I've used both HMR block and triple attacks on the same gear course. And uh, in my mind, they're very comparable. One right. Of the, one of the irritants for some number of years was that there were certain forms in Minnesota that um, you didn't get uh, through either triple attacks or HMR block. I used HMR. And an H and R block just took over from tax cut. They bought tax cut uh, three years ago, I think. So it's relatively new that H and R block has uh, been had their version there. So I imagine, and and then trying to support their local offices and stuff like that. Uh, they saw a decrease in business, and this is the way that they thought we can augment that and offer offer the hands-on, face-to-face support along with the package. So it's it is a good package and and can work there. One one problem I had some years ago, I had uh, an investment in a limited partnership, and uh, the tax software was miserable for trying to get those numbers in the right places. The instructions you get from IRS are miserable, absolutely horrible. As a matter of fact, I sold the investment because it was such a pain in the trade. To yeah, to the tax tax, tax forms in new situ in new situations. The limited uh, partnership. Uh, I mean, there's so many different forms you put numbers on, and then the numbers don't seem to make any sense. But you do what the instructions say. IRS instructions is not a friendly type of interview process. And uh, I just decided you know, I don't even really know if it's a good investment or not. Mm -hmm. It's hard to tell. And it's hard to tell what the tax ramifications are by putting those numbers on the different forms that you don't need for anything else other than a limited partnership. And you gotta wait till April to do it. Too. And you gotta yeah, so I just figured out. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Oh. It was just such a such a pain to try to figure out how to do the tax, and the tax software at that time was no help. Oh, okay, yeah, and some some you know it's it's I asking you for numbers that you don't know I, or. I don't know if they've improved that. That's sort of the question behind my remark is whether or not uh, limited partnerships can be handled now. And it's always easier doing something that you've done in previous years or you've known that this number goes here and you have this number and stuff like that. Anytime you have a new situation there, that's where it uh, certainly gets a little more confusing because even though it's doing an interview process, if you don't know how to answer those questions and you said no when you should have said yes and so it's not even asking you for all these other numbers, well... Where, where do I put in these numbers, or, or where does that go? That can be very confusing there. Uh, I think, Joe, did you have a question? Or? You know, um, across all three of them, you know, the online version, you can print out the stick, right? There's no problem printing out the stick on all, all the online versions. Once you pay, I mean, if, the if there's a cost. You pay for the federal. Uh, yeah. Well, you get the federal the, the, or you get the federal plus state. Yeah, if you're, if you're going to send in your state uh, in paper form, you have to print out a copy of your federal also and send that along. So, so they, they, both of them or all of them do let you print federal and state uh, uh, and that. It's just a question of do you want to e-file? And some people like to e-file if they're getting a getting a refund because it's going to come faster than if you send it in uh, by paper. Because if you send it in by paper, uh, it has to go through uh, optical character recognition and, and rescanning and checking and stuff like that, whereas the e-file uh, just goes right into their computer system. And so there, it saves a few steps there, which makes refunds and uh, stuff like that faster. Right. 
Now, if you are getting, a, if you are, I, I actually graduated from college with an accounting degree and, and I do have a tax background, but uh, if you are getting a refund, you should never get a refund from the government. Never give the government your money yeah. interest free for a year. Uh, you uh, send your money to me. I'll keep it. I'll keep it for a year and give it back to you. And if you're happy just getting that back, I, I prefer to have interest and and have money work for me instead of giving it. So I pay the minimum amount. I always pay in every year. Pay the minimum amount where I'm not going to get hit with a penalty or interest and. Uh, the government's not going to get my money anymore. <laughs> I'm not one of those people that says, I'm willing to pay more. No, I want to pay less. No, no. I've got, and, and over the years, over, over like uh, 40 years now, I think I've been audited uh, eight or nine times. But it's uh, the audits are just... To verify numbers, I send them in the numbers. I've never had to go in and do anything, so. <laughs> uh, this is this is PC Magazine does have uh, links and reviews, and uh, I mentioned the link in the handout here, or if you go out to this after I post it on the website, you'll be able to click on this, and you can uh, directly go in and you can see some of the compare. Oh, you can see some of the comparison of the different packages and, and what's out there also. Uh, I also mention in here, so in the additional uh, links portion, uh, donations. Uh, if you donate stuff to Goodwill or, or anywhere there, uh, uh, you can use the out on the TurboTax site. There is a package. It used to be a separate deal called It's Deductible, but it's out there for free to use. You don't have to be a TurboTax user and it's not going to cost you any money. Let you put in your uh, deductibles and print out your list and it'll put the range of how much you can deduct for each item so you can get all that figured out uh, so that you don't get audited and, and things like that. So it's a very nice tool there. Uh, there's also, uh, if you don't find stuff that's out there, their Salvation Army does have a website uh, for figuring out the value, and Goodwill also has one where you can get some estimates on stuff. So some people think, you know, well, gee, I donated a T-shirt. Well, I think a T-shirt is worth ten dollars. Well, no, it's not worth ten dollars. Uh, and then other people, most people, undervalue because they think, oh, at a garage sale, I've seen T-shirts and they're for fifty cents or a dollar. Well. If you price that, you're not doing justice to yourself. The, the price that you can write off on your taxes, I believe, is like $3 or something like that. So use the right price. You're going to be able to write off more, and you're going to have a more accurate uh, numbers that are defendable if you do get audited there. Are the different sites uh, comparable? They're comparable. Some, Some are more detailed. Same with the T-shirt someplace else? Some of them will give ranges, so if it's in good quality, and, I, and where it gets a little more touchy is things like furniture, things like that. Because, you know, you may have spent uh, $500 for it, and you think it's worth $300 or something like that. Well, that's where, that's where you, you know, you have, to, you have to be able to defend it. Does it differentiate brand names? Because, you know, like you give something that's, no, it doesn't, and none of these places do. However, if you do have more higher buck items, that's where doing a little more research, going out to an eBay or things like that, and then when you go out there to look at what value you're gonna you're gonna write it off as, print out a copy just in case you get audited. Now you've got something that you can defend. Whereas if you just say, "Well, I think it's worth this," that isn't good enough, you know. And taking pictures is very good, and, and then it's a matter of doing the inventory, and that's where it's deductible is great for that, because, again, you can go through, you can start doing this, it starts searching for that name, and it starts pulling up the values, and, okay, six of these, and shoes, and so much of this, and, and stuff like that, it makes it easy to work with there. Right. 
Yeah, and this is something that you can do all year long, uh, so you don't have to wait just until tax time either to enter this stuff in and get some of the numbers, which then makes it easier at tax time because you aren't having to spend several hours or digging up pictures or writing lists or things like that. Uh, any other questions? You know, from last month, I got to ask you a question. Intour is advertising QuickBooks. And you said they sold it. So why are they advertising it? Well, it, 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 they sold it to another company. Uh, that company still has... It's going to take it's going to take a couple of years probably to totally divest of it. You know, it's kind of like a nation and and stuff like that. There's still products out there that have the 3M logo and a nation, you know, and and things like that. So there's still licensing and and a few things like that out there. But now Wells Fargo has the uh, uh, three turbo. I did it. That's where it's that's where it's confusing because you'll see links to stuff. You're never sure what you're getting until you actually go out there. Are you getting the premium version? Or are you getting the free version? Or are you getting the basic version? And if you're getting the basic, does it come with an e-file for the state, or doesn't it come with the e-file? And that's that's the confusing part of it, and and it's confusing because. The vendors want it that way, <laughs> and and so you know the price you pay at a, at a let's say a Wells Fargo, uh, I couldn't tell you if it's any. I would I would guess that Fidelity is giving you more because Fidelity will say there that it's the premium version. And they'll say they got a free e-file on the state. I, I, well, the premium ver online version comes with free e-file. If it was the deluxe version, then you'd be paying for it. So that's that's where these difference of versions and you know what you get and what uh, what you don't get, it, 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 it's complicated. Uh, just a comment on state e-file. I did spray for it was twenty bucks last year e-file my state return because it saved me a trip to the post office to have the data they need. And I think the post if you throw all those forms together. Yeah, it gets thick. You're really and, not saving it much. Plus, you got your paper and ink and you're sure that it got there. When you e-file, if you've never e-filed before, uh, you get uh, a message that it was, the first thing it does is the federal and the state will do a quick check of it to see that all the numbers are there. And it'll give a, it passed or it failed. So if there's something missing, you'll get it sent back to you. The, the, so you got that guaranteed delivery that it got there, that it did pass, that it is in the system. Whereas to me, you know, unless you're sending it certified and things like that, you're, well, did they get it? Or I haven't heard back or, you know, things like that. Uh, you know, or you're waiting for a check to get cashed until it's, uh, then, then you know that they got it. So the price seems outrageous, but maybe it's, Sort of worth it. <laughs> now, now, if they send your check here, send the forms here. No cash and checks. Right. All yeah, you're pay. right. You're right. I, I guess I forgot about that. The last time I think I did that, you know, everything was going to the same place there. And the state, I mean, if you want to, you can fill out the forms and, um, just in PDF format and e file, but the state charges to do that almost as much. Almost as much as the tax software. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it'll change. I mean, certainly they've talked about flat 10%. Let's get rid of everything, you know, and and uh, uh, I it's it's very very complicated, and uh, uh, certainly a whole industry has sprung up around it, uh, uh, and and you know you you'd have to phase things out, because I don't believe that you could ever be in a position of saying, okay, starting uh, for this year, 2017 taxes will be filed completely different. No, you can't do that, because businesses and people just don't know what to do there.
Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. What's that? Windows 7 by Microsoft. Because I've been trying to get updates. The last update was in uh, October. And the, and it goes to the update, and all it does is just grinds away for an hour. And I can't find the update. I'm not positive. I, I believe it's supposed to be still, still supported there. However, uh, I've also, I think, heard that uh, with the last update to IE, uh, it was not supported on previous versions there, Win 7 and, and things like that. So That came a lot sooner than I would have expected. Oh, right, right. Yeah, I, I'm not sure there. Uh, one second, I gotta, where am I here? I don't know why that doesn't... Even if I don't use the file, I can still um, fill it out, but still send my paper to my uh, 